squad one are you there what's good and you know who this is baby the number one podcast in america dedicated to all you kings and queens of color homies and home meds shotters woo gals g boys and charges the one and only jerk jalop and collard greens podcast Harvey Weinstein, Colin Kaepernick, Bill Cosby, Ellen DeGeneres, and Ben Shapiro, and possibly this podcast after this conversation. What do they all have in common? Well, they're all recipients of a not so modern day phenomenon we like to call cancel culture. Well, before we get into that, you know what this is, the Jerk Jaloff and Colin Reads podcast. I'm your host, Glenn, AKA G Ransom. Wagwan, are you there? What's good? And I'm joined by none other than our usual suspects, the Drift Jaloff and Collard Greets panel, the homies, the podcast panel. We have Oye D. Ron D. Black. Say what up. What it do, what it do, what it do. It's really good. What's going on out here? All right. We have the franchise, Francis. Say what's good. Yeah, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing today? All right. We got DeAndre. Here. And we have the mysterious Chunky. What's up? All right. I'm trusting you all had some wonderful Valentine's weekends. With your shorties, your booze, side pieces, mistresses, all that and above. Jeez. I have a weird thing when it comes to holidays. Since we're talking about Valentine's, just in general, I, it's, I'm, I'm probably going to get a lot of slack for this. I know it's going to happen, but I'm going to say it anyway because this is who I am. When it comes to holidays, birthdays in general, I am, I'm not a big fan. I just feel like if you love somebody or you appreciate them, you're going to celebrate them in general, right? But it's funny because I had a conversation with my sister about this. When it comes to like Valentine's Day, I was like, well, she might get mad because I put it on blast. But like when it comes to Valentine's Day, um, like what if your man celebrates you the day before or the day after? She's like, nah, that's not good enough. It got to be the day of you got to plan accordingly. And for me personally, I'm not saying I knock that. But for me personally, I think that's kind of weak. That's crazy, um, though, because you know how nuts it is on Valentine's Day itself. Yeah, it's, like it's, it's chaotic. So that's why I'd rather be like, let's plan something like the weekend or something like that. But, so are you telling me that you want to cancel Valentine's Day or you yes. yourself <laughs> want to get canceled? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is your lad podcast. So well, if you get enough life, men to go online. I'm about to get My life's about to get canceled. I think, <laughs> I think, the, I think the keys are you basically know your partner. And if it's important to your partner, then it's important to you hey, Dr. Uh, that's, that's, the, that's a proper answer that's, i think that's uh, i think that's kind of the safe the safe uh bet for uh for anyone for that matter basically know your partner if it's an important to your partner then it's important to you um deep like it seems like it's probably not super important to your wife so that's that's cool you lucky um yeah but i still you know, i don't know I'm, I'm still one of those like <sighs> hopeless romantics in a sense yeah. So I'll still do it, but it's are you like, a hopeless romantic? And when you're just like, oh well, you would rather cancel Valentine's Day. That, because, that's, that's such an oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think like we just overall cancel Valentine's Day and just love on your woman every day. Yeah, every man, day. I think like I just love on them every day. Like, what is one day compared to 300 and what 6,500 other days? You know what I mean? Or 60, 600 and 364 other days of the year. It's just like, come on. I'm like, Valentine's Day is just the only day I'm going to show you I care about you. And we eat, we should eat the <laughs> opportunity out here because y'all can love on us too. So I ain't trying. Everybody's big, big facts. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that, that's, that's a comment. That, that's the comment that I'm, I'm probably going to avoid, avoid talking about. Cause yeah, I, I definitely think, uh, men, um, get a little bit of the short end of the stick. I guess in traditional, traditional, uh, uh, only from my experience, traditional uh, man and woman relationships, we normally kind of get the the short end of the, uh, <laughs> but it's of the crazy. stick as far as, as, as far as those things. But maybe, uh-huh. maybe it's because we don't, we, we haven't made it clear to women that we care about it, right? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we, we don't, we don't have a heart. I want my chocolate. <laughs> I mean, I, mean I normally eat, I normally eat the chocolate. Like some of the, my wife always shares with me the chocolates I buy her. So it's so, like, whatever I get, I'm normally. So whatever. do you buy the chocolate with the intent of some of it in there is stuff that you want to eat too? Like, you know, oh, that's for fact. Oh yeah, for a fact. Yeah, yeah, for a fact. I'm, like, uh, I'm gonna buy yeah. this dozen so I get six, she gets six, be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah, straw, right? just I maybe like, certain I like ones like the caramel strawberry. ones. Yeah, like the caramel ones. Yeah, that that's a that's a smart one to do. The the chocolate strawberries, that's a smart one to uh so you, you know what you guys aren't about making your own gift? Nah. 
Mm. Nah, oh, we used to really be bro. big on that. Craft, bro. I mean, yeah, it's got to be special. Really no, I mean, write a poem, you know, make your own card out of construction paper and crayon. Yeah. I mean, that like, drawing that's, that you that's, always that's make cute. fun of, I was trying to see if I can grab it to show you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see if I could grab it. You got it. That's the thought that counts. That is my favorite one. Wow. <laughs> you know, a little funny drawing that this. my wife. You uh, can't see yeah. this, but this is no, I just yeah. I just have to give my wife a shout out because she actually went out and buy me some gift this year and and I actually ah. felt bad because I was thinking like well we have all this travel plans already do we really have to like still do gift exchange and and then I was like okay I need to go so I ran to the store got some flowers you know did the all candy stuff then then I was good damn well, you, gotta, you, <laughs> so you know what's here. crazy and though write your like own poem bro that's that's how you got to do it. It's like, regardless, you know, we can't even make it all about us giving gifts to them because regardless, they're going to celebrate that Valentine's. Even if it means having a Galentine's Day, they're going to go out there and they're going to make sure they get the love they <laughs> yeah, need. So absolutely. it's like, yo, would you rather your girl go out with her girls and get some or, you know, you show love to her on the end of the day. So, well, I, I cook. So I feel like I'm like, I'm, I'm all the way up. <laughs> I almost never cook. I think the last time I cooked was it's I cooked a little something today. for Thanksgiving. And then before <laughs> that, I have not cooked at all. So. I uh, uh, I cooked a little something, and you know I, f I felt a little proud of myself. I know it was something that job. my wife appreciated because I almost never cook, so I didn't burn down the house. Just and that's the end of the, the day. In our lives. That's it. I'm just saying, but for me, like I do that stuff. Like I cook, I help in the house, I do all that stuff. I buy her flowers every once in a while, randomly spot, call her job, buy lunch, do all those kind of like little things when I randomly think of her. So I just hate having manufactured days that force me to say, oh, you got to treat her special today. Because if you don't, then you're going to deal with, oh, what's your man do for you today? What's your man do for you today? I mean, I think I think it's necessary for the simple fact that some people may not think along those lines, right? You have to have that reminder like, oh, shit, like I didn't remember to do X, Y, and Z. I mean, it's just one of those holidays that it depends how you do it, right? So if you do something on your own, then that makes it better. If you do something that you like, oh, I have to buy this or order that, then it doesn't make it as special. So it's just like, if you don't cook too often, you cook me, like I'll write something or, or get a card and write like a love note in it. And I don't do that all the time. So it's just like, it makes it more valuable, right? So every woman wants to feel loved at that time. So like you said, if they talk to their girlfriends or their friends or whatever, like, oh, what did your man or husband do for you today? Oh, he didn't do anything. He completely forgot or whatever case may be. You don't want to be that oddball out. At least do something, right? Yeah. So like you can make right. like a little like coupon car, like, oh, I'm going to give you a massage on these days, whatever case may be. It, I don't think it's the amount of the um, item. I think it's the effort that you put into the item that makes a difference. And I'll say so myself, like I'd rather put effort into it than buy her something like off the street, like, oh, I forgot. Let me just buy these roses that this man is selling on this corner. You know what I mean? Nah, Chucky, you just not trying to buy none, bro. He's not trying to buy. Or, none. or, <laughs> or you probably, you probably Listen, found man. maybe your wife appreciates that more. Exactly, you doing your thing exactly. more than that's true. That flowers, might be but the love yeah, to each to each his language. own. There's yeah. there's yeah. people who like really care about those type of like, right? When you're talking about like love languages of people, right? Some people's love languages like physical gifts and and those type mm -hmm. of outwardly things that they can brag about all right but then all it takes is all right fine then devil's advocate all right chunky wants to make his little macaroni heart for his wife and then he gonna tell like and then she's gonna the do, macaroni oh, hearts like, back out no nah, like her homie's gonna be like oh what did you what'd you get for your valentine's day oh her homie's gonna be like yeah i got a necklace what'd you get oh chunky made me a macaroni freaking heart like, yeah, but that's not how she's gonna say it. She's like, oh, she can be like, oh, girl, right. like <laughs> my man is so thoughtful. He made exactly. me this thing. Exactly. Like, it's, it's, she not gonna just say oh, he made no, me a back Do they, do they back really go behind the scenes and talk <laughs> about this? Like, do, are they so. really going back behind the scenes and comparing gifts? Like, I think yo, so. we got you. I, yo, does, I mean, girls talk, bro. Yeah, does it matter? At the end of the day, as long as you do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed yeah. to do it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I think. Like, you want dinner? <laughs> like, Listen, man. And, and, and what Dre is saying is it's all about your love language, right? And like, if her, if her friend's husband's brought this or brought that, and she's the only one in the group that I sat down and I made something, I took the time out of my day, figured it out, didn't say, oh, what's the special on K Jeweler today? Let me just pick this out. There's a, a thousand reviews on it, but like, okay, cool. It's me and my macaroni heart. I use little crayons to draw other stick figures on it. That's just gonna happen. 
So fuck you, D Black. <laughs> oh, you know what? I might even just not, nah, but like real talk, I might steal that from Chunky because that's real. You know, you you can save you can save a buck with that with that idea. I mean, it's thoughtful, uh, you know, and it's, and it's creative. It's yeah. not a oh, lose a marriage. You, know, <laughs> you, need to know your, you need to know your wife. Don't get, don't, uh, don't be having to call Chunky and say, yo, uh, Chunky, can I sleep on your couch this week? Cause, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, 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 hey, that's cool. Uh, I already know your heart <laughs> with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> listeners, let us know. Make a macaroni heart for your lady next, or make for your lady or your man next to uh, Valentine's. Let us know how that works out for you. <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> But um, definitely not to break thought from our actual topic today, though. But first and foremost, we'd like to expend a, a, extend a special thank you to all of our day one listeners out there that listened to the first podcast. And of course, follow us on Instagram. And real talk, we got love from all over the world on this one, not just within the United States, but we got some love over there in Belgium, the UK, even in Ireland, the Netherlands, everywhere. So big thank you to everyone that listened to us on day one in the first episode. There's a lot more to come. And a very, very special thank you the topblackpodcast.org. Um, they've been following us since day one, since we launched and even featured us on their website. Um, if you don't know what Top Black Podcast is, it's basically the uh, number one source for finding the entertaining podcasts within the black community, usually a lot of black culture related podcasts. So um, for them to promote us on their site and on their Instagram, definitely big love to all of you all out there at Top Black, black, top black Podcast.org. Ah, get the words out. But um, so just check them out at Top Black Top black podcast. Oh man, uh, I know, right? It's just like top, top, top. But <laughs> did you yeah, write it down? Check top, them out. Black, black, black. <laughs> exactly. Black, black, black. Like, yo, black. Can't time. get his words out today, but there's um, no I mean, rush. Other than that, exactly. So, cancel culture. Getting back to the intro, cancel culture. What exactly is cancel culture? So, according to Wikipedia, cancel culture is a modern form of ostracism in which someone is thrust out of social or professional circles either online, on social media, in the real world, or both. Those who are subject to this ostracism are said to be canceled. So the purpose for this discussion today is we're going to take a look at it in depth and give our sub subjective points of view on it. Um, particularly, is cancel culture a real thing? Is it a good thing? Um, is it accountability activism or simply modernized mob mentality? Mm -hmm. So the first question for the group I would ask, um, are you for or against cancel culture? And I'll direct that one over to DeAndre. You like you're itching to answer a question. Uh, yeah, I, I am absolutely for uh, people being canceled. I mean, I normally have like a slightly different uh, classification for it. I think it's really people making alternate choices uh, <laughs> instead alternate of necessarily choices. choices. Yeah, I, I kind of think that that's like a better, because no one in, in essence really gets canceled, right? I think in, in essence, people enough people get together to say you know what we don't like what this person is doing and we're going to make another choice to not support you we're going to make a choice to to not buy your music or not to support your clothes so i'm i'm absolutely for people grouping together um and saying we're going to make a different choice right we're <laughs> we're not gonna you know uh you know listen to this person's music anymore right because they've had a history of of uh of abusing women or uh we're not going to watch this person's show anymore because they have a history of abusing women <laughs> or we're not going to eat pizza at this place because the the person is you know racist and says some wild things or we're not going to support this clothing so to me i just i think it's about people making choices and i'm i'm absolutely for um people making these choices. Obviously there's good and bad to that, which I'm sure we'll get into. We'll get but, into it, yeah. Um, All right, so I'm that's absolutely one for it. So what about you, Francis? What's your take, for or against it? I am against it, bro. Um, I mean, like, it's hard to say, to, to put a blanket statement around it like that because I do think there's a, a space for it in our community. Um, but the current state that cancer culture is currently is, is really toxic and I think, um, there's a, a room for growth in that space right now. I mean, it's like the woke police, you know, they, they try to, you know, pick the booger out of somebody's nose. I know that's a nasty analogy, but but if you look in the mirror on lately, you know, like- They got boogers in I, their nose too. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got boogers, nobody's born perfect, man. And I think cancel culture doesn't give people space for to grow. And, you know, like we, we all are constantly growing and changing our views on something yesterday may be different today. So, so we have to be 
just be consistent and be honest with that and be open to have those, those conversations and really do our due diligence and do critical thinking before we start judging and canceling people. Okay, Francis did his research. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go. Why are you say like you mad shot, man? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, I, was, I wasn't expecting, you know, Michael Eric Dyson to come on, you know what I mean? So yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the Nigerian version. All right, go ahead, D-Black, what's your take? Oh, me? So, I don't know, man. I like, when it comes to cancel culture, I have, it's kind of hard because I, I feel like I understand the premise of cancel culture, like what the what, what is it, the intended purpose of it. But at the same time, it kind of goes back to what Fran was saying is like that things get canceled when they really shouldn't. And sometimes due diligence doesn't get served. And my only problem is, I mean, I feel like as a collective, we agree that something's bad or good. I'm, I'm with that. But there's certain things I like, like don't take away my, my, my jello. I, I like jello. I, I like pudding. Like, you like remind me of my G. I like <laughs> 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 say, no, no one cancel. Who, who canceled, who canceled jello or pudding? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> well, you, well, Bill Cosby got canceled, like, bro. Trapped in the closet he ain't episode jello. one three. He ain't jello. He's no, he's still eating jello. jello. I've never heard pudding. one person say, I'm not eating jello anymore because of Bill Cosby. Oh, That's the first. Jello's a word. Natural. So we not boycotting jello? All right. <laughs> no, I, I hear that. Maybe, maybe ask the people. I guess if you've ever heard uh, if you've ever heard people boycotting jello, drop it in the comments. Let, let us know. Um, I mean, the brand That's a new or one. the products. You mean like yeah, but you know what? Brand all <laughs> Everything's getting canceled now. This so I don't I'm like I feel like I feel like I look really good in some denim well, jeans. And and Tommy Hill figures they be about that. So <laughs> I think you're gonna say you look good in some jello. I was like, that's what you did about that day. You have the green jello, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so while D Black's over here giving us fantasies of him and Jello, um, D <laughs> Chucky, what's, what's your thing? <laughs> I'm a comment if you like to see D Black and some Jello. Let us know. And green Jello, <laughs> we're going to need a lot more. We're going to need a lot more. <laughs> um, so my thing about cancel culture, um, I I don't like it personally. Um, I believe in holding people accountable, and I believe in boycotting, but there isn't a fine line there. For the simple fact that oh, I don't like what I'm listening to, I'm going to advocate to get it canceled. You have to power to turn that thing off, right? okay, I don't want to listen to this comedian anymore. Why am I rallying everybody else up? Oh, let's get this person to stop doing stand-up comedy. Well, don't go to their shows. Don't listen to their specials to skip over it. We have that ability nowadays to pick and select what we want to listen to and what we want to do. That doesn't give you the right to say, if I'm upset about something, it has to get shut down. Once again, what D-Black was saying is, is that, that growth, right? So if, if someone's not allowed to say something, then we're always hindered in our freedom of speech. We're always hindered in the things that we can do for what reason. So cancel culture, it, it has a place, but I don't think it's necessary because to me, it's a mob mentality. Let's run up on these people. Let's tell them to stop. If they don't stop, we'll get them shut down. And I may not say something offensive, not me particularly, but anybody like, oh, you know, I like boogers. <gasps> he said boogers. Let's get him canceled. <laughs> so, and that's why we keep not... visiting boogers. I, I mean, I mean, like that's oh, okay. Yeah. My bad. My bad. He likes green <laughs> Jello on his body. Let's get him canceled. <laughs> This is, this is offensive to jello <laughs> right and, it, and it's not to take away from how those people feel but there is a time and a place for that you can have your own little group you can have your own little facebook thing own little section and get together and discuss it that's cool but don't ruin someone else's time that they enjoy that particular type of thing so, yeah i think i mean i think like cancel culture has been weaponized by the community where you know, like the or the origin of it is to really to keep the the wealthy and the people in power accountable for their wrongdoing. But now I feel like we are doing we are using the same ideology against our neighbors, right? It's like, oh, you like Trump? Oh, I don't like him. Cancel. But I mean, but don't you think the argument could be made that that I know that we're focused. I know there's a lot of examples of bad things happening as a result of cancel culture, but do you not see that there is some good that can come out of it there no. there's exam there's examples where let's just say if by people not voicing an issue online that maybe people would have never known about it so right. as a result of them being vocal hold on as a result of them being vocal about their being unhappy about something using their freedom of speech 
using right. your I know you're very pro uh, freedom of speech, <laughs> First right? Amendment. These people are voicing their opinions online. And as a result, by a lot of people voicing their opinions online, other people who maybe have had, had no clue what was going on with that issue, or that product or that service or that person um, were, were basically informed as as a result of it. So I, I think I think we I think we sometimes and, and I, rightfully so I, I do agree that there are a lot of really bad examples, but I feel like we shouldn't only look at the examples when bad things happen. I think people should be responsible for anything that they say or do. So right. I feel like we so have to be thing. adults. That's we have to be thing. adults. And if you say something, you got to stand by behind you what you said. If people really, are going to really be upset quick. with you for a little while, you got to just take that. That's that's how it. That's how the world works. That's how any decision I make is. I don't yeah, disagree with you, that. but is that is that accountability or is that cancel culture? That's you're a holding... good question. So yeah. and that's that's the only thing I have to say to that. Like what you're yeah, saying yeah. to me sounds more so accountability. Than cancel culture. Like well, someone did something wrong, you're saying that, hey, this is completely wrong by these yeah. legitimate standards. Other people agree. I'm putting it out there so people can have that insight on what happened that the most of society doesn't agree with. So yeah. to me, that's holding that person accountable. That's not yeah. saying I'm canceling you because you're wearing Tommy Hilfiger jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have, a, I have, a, I have, a, I have an example. Let's know. let's just use like let's use like a more specific example than like the Tommy Hilfiger jeans because I don't think anyone gets canceled for wearing Tommy Hilfiger jeans. Who remembers that? Who remembers that? I'm talking about the example. So there's this one story where this gentleman... um, Even use Harvey Weinstein is a good example of that too. uh, Um, I'll use a more like, I'll use a a, a little bit more of a, because Harvey Weinstein, I think that one has... So this this example that I remember, there was a gentleman who mm -hmm. owned a... He was in his car or he was in his driveway and there Mm -hmm. was a white man. So it was a black man in his driveway um, who got out of his car. There's a white man in a pickup truck, um, some type of like contractor van. And he was calling this black man all type of crazy, you know, racial slurs, right? Mm-hmm. Because he was in his contractor truck, people looked up his business and he eventually lost his license because he was screaming all these racial and disgusting things to this man on the block. To me, I don't feel bad for that guy. To me, that's that's those are the examples of this guy owns some type of business where he's, you know, p- people basically said, look, look at this guy. This guy is 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 harassing black people, calling them all type of ethnic slurs. He got I don't want to say I guess he got canceled. I don't know. I don't, I don't really believe that people get canceled. But to me, you have to be responsible for the things he has. So he lost his license as a result of that. I, mean, I don't know. I don't feel bad for that. But, guy, but that's though. accountability, though. You can't run around <laughs> on the business pretending like you're something that you're not. Right. So that. Yeah, that's rewind a little bit and you look at you know the kkk right there are people who are in hoods part of multiple different businesses and doing whatever they want to do during mm-hmm. saying racial slurs yeah. putting these um heinous crimes of hate right mm-hmm. so you're pretty much holding that person accountable like this doesn't fly anymore in society if you want to yell racial slurs or or you know gender slurs out to people i'm gonna hold you accountable that the person that doesn't know shouldn't be giving you business because behind closed doors you're calling them whatever So you should be shut down. You should not get my money. You should not get my time because there's other people out there who are fantastic people that try to do the right thing. So let's shift focus up. We're saying like, hey, you're done with. I'm taking my business to somebody else and everyone should know the way that you're treating other people. And to me, that's just accountability. That's not canceling that person. So here's an example then. He would probably say um, he got canceled. Here's an example then. (laughs) What if um, a business decides to not render its services because... And I'll mm-hmm. use an example. There was a bakery, I forgot the state, but they yeah. refused to bake a cake for this gay couple oh, yeah, I remember that. simply because they were gay. Now, this went to the Supreme Court and everything. Yeah. And it was basically indicated that they had their freedom of speech as a business to not serve certain people. So mm-hmm. they're not obligated to saying, hey, you know, I can serve you. I don't, I'm not obligated to do that. So in a sense, like, isn't that a part of why we can do what we can do essentially aren't we afforded some of these freedoms to kind of say what we want to say or do what we want to do in a sense and not be persecuted yo facts let me yeah. jump on just because like i'm in georgia and um i have no problem with you know open I, i'm gonna be i have no problem with open racism i have no problem with it so ever because it lets me easily identify who doesn't like me and where not to go <laughs> <laughs> like they're like, oh fair. brother, get up. Nah, let's start. Like, oh, I'm not going over there. <laughs> and I have no problem with that because I don't, and I think that's I think that's what cancel culture is creating a world where people can't truly be themselves. Ultimately, everybody wants the ability to be themselves. And Dre, you made a face. And the reason why I say that 
<laughs> because guess what? Because here's the thing now. Like, prime example, um, I forgot this lady's name, Mandalorian chick that just recently got canceled. Uh, oh, Gina Carano, yeah. Yeah, she that just recently got canceled because of all of her heinous speak and all that stuff on social media. Like, mind you, that's who she really is. I, I bet you real talk night that Disney probably really didn't care that that's who she is. But the thing is that business, um, um Disney's money cares yeah. because the money's going to be affected. So guess what? They got to cancel her. She's she done. So they got to end her contract. So that's why she, they released her. But it's not like they really released her because they probably themselves truly felt it was wrong. Listen, Disney, we're not coming for you. Don't cancel us. Look, man, she said what she said. She said what she said. And as a result of what she said, she was fired from her job. We all have, we all have jobs. We all have things where if you say or do something that are against the rules, you get fired. Like, I, again, this, these are one of those things where I'm just like, yeah, one plus one is two. You say something, everything you say or do, there's a reaction to it. There's a consequence for it, right? I don't feel bad for her. She no, said really saying, nasty things. Now you're things, gonna have right? more closet racists because then, people right? Yeah. Like, well, that that may be that may be um, the, that may be true, but or all I'm all like all I can hold people to are things that they that they say and they do. And fact. if they're saying but, something that I don't like, I think it's I think it's within my right or anyone else's right to be vocal and say I don't like it. Yeah, I was just saying that I think um, it's like it's like school. Like you know, we go to school and we we want to get the grade. But the ultimate goal for going to school is to learn something. And obviously the way we are being judged is by the grade, but but you, at least I hope that we are learning something. So like, and the same thing applies to our day-to-day -day lives. If we are being censored and we're not giving people opportunity to actually learn and have those conversations, then we are actually, what are we doing to ourselves as a community? Because I mean, I mean, we kind of joked about it when we started. It was like, oh yeah, hopefully we don't say something crazy and get and get canceled because mm -hmm. now we have to be careful about what we say and how we say it because we don't want to offend somebody. It's mm -hmm. like, can I just say my true, be my true authentic self, and we can talk about it if you disagree with what I said and so, not like and not cancel me because of it, you know? So I know I use the First Amendment as an example with that business. It's not to say I support their decision. I mean, I feel like. If you want to do what's best for your business, you're going to want to serve everyone, you know, but that's that's them. That's their decision. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, other than that, I think that's a part of the problem with cancel culture. I know I never got the chance to get my part in, but to me, I feel like cancel culture is attempt is the imperfect attempt to make the perfect society. You know what I mean? The idea that we should all conform to these certain views. But in the same way, I kind of look at it as a as a necessary evil in a way where it's like a, a system of checks and balances, like for people that are already maybe marginalized to actually have a voice. But one of the biggest problems I have with cancel culture is that even if we all have the pretense that, oh, okay, you have to say or do something to be canceled, when if you do nothing, if you're complicit or perceived as complicit, you can also get canceled. Yeah, so that, that also voices yeah. on to the, um, exactly, to the point that, okay, are we actually being our real selves? Are we allowed to actually speak our piece? Now, I do think freedom of speech is essential, but that doesn't give you the right to be an you know what I mean? Like, I mean, obviously, it, it, it gives you the right to be an because it's freedom of speech, uh, right? Yeah, so I mean, I mean uh, but know, to be tactful with it at the same time, but here, like if, here's, I mean, if you want to communicate thing, right? effectively, so here's the thing that everyone can communicate effectively. So, like you said, you can't sit here and say that you want people to be themselves and then tell them on the back end and say you have to communicate effectively. Maybe my level of communication isn't effective because I don't have the tools to do such. So I give you raw information and the raw information that I'm giving you is not the intent to be offensive, but this is the way that I decide to give it to you. So it's up to the two of us or the couple of us to figure like, okay, what is trying to be said in this, in this situation? Is it, are you meant to be offensive? Are you really trying to hurt me and be like, you know, derogatory, but then you have hate speech, right? Do you have hate crimes, right? They're put into their categories to be held accountable. This is once again, why I say, I don't agree with cancel culture. If you have a voice and you have to speak, there are laws, there are rules, there are ordinances to support you. Now, if you want a new law, if you want a new ordinance, then you have to create that. And that has to fall on us as a society to agree with it. So if you're saying something that isn't right, and there's a whole collective of people saying, yes, this is messed up because I relate to it like this. Or if you're talking about gays like this, I can understand it as a Black individual. That's, that's kind of messed up. That's going to result in this. So you mm -hmm. should stop doing that. Not because you don't like a pickle in the cup, 
that offends me. It's the same thing as you calling me the N-word. Like, no, those those aren't on the same line. So that cancel culture to me, it's it's in a universe of its own. It doesn't really apply to boycotting and it doesn't apply to accountability. To me, those things are super structured. And the reason why I say that, I see you're making the face, Trey, is because like I said, I'm trying to get you canceled because I don't like a pickle in the cup and my homies don't like it either. So you need to stop. Yeah, but so so I, I think that that's like what people think that people are doing when being, but like, let's just use this, this exact woman since Glenn brought up this, her name is Gina Carano, right? I feel, yeah, I feel like weird sorry. not saying her name, right? So her, her, for example, right? So she said what she said, I believe it was some type of anti-Semitic kind of comments, I believe mm-hmm. is what, mm-hmm. the, what she said. So she lost her job, but she's not really canceled, right? She's probably going to be able to like, I'm, I'm going to let, let's, let's mark this down right now, right? Let's just, I'm going to say what's going to happen over the next like year with her, right? And in a year, we can come back and see if I was right or not. I think what's going to happen is that she's going to get all these opportunities as a result of that, right? She's going to, to Francis's point, she's going to use this as an opportunity to learn, or she's going to double down on this, right? So I don't think she's going to be canceled. She's going to be in movies. She's going to, she's going to bounce back. Most people do. I don't really think people right are canceled yeah really, in, so, in so she just lost her job temporarily diaries. she's got removed from the show <laughs> yeah, i think so I she'll think... be back i don't think it's the last time we're hearing from her it's my, my so was she really canceled then i mean right, I, right. I, yeah. so, yeah, so, like, that's my she question she like, was just held accountable effective, <laughs> how, how effective is it really then like but that's know, not we like just put all this energy into it but in reality people are really not being canceled at least the elite and the popular and the rich the rich people are not the day-to-day people who actually are getting impacted sometimes are long-term impact. And they become the society where we actually have tax money and we have to take care of them in, in return. So like there's a backhand consequence, potential backhand consequence of that as well that we have to be aware of. But I'm not opposed to anything that Dre and um, that you're saying, because I do agree with that. I think it's just like, it's just, I feel like we just need to go about it a totally different way because the way people are doing about it, going about it right now, I think it's it's over the it's overboard. So, so overboard. I have a question. How is this any overboard. different from how is this any different? So I will use like if we use boycott for example, how is it any different from people either standing outside of a business saying I don't want to go in there than people just being online saying I don't want to like I, I guess like how are we? So to well, me like the whole well, can, I think I, people like put this like people get nasty, cancel culture bro. in like a framework, but to me I don't. Uh, to me, it's just like an online boycott, right? It's an no. online, so it's an online. You find it, it, people's more than address. That, but I'm saying it's, it's very simple. So that that's that's completely different. Well, right? it's kind of tied to it too, though. Well, that's, that's like the, doxing that's and that's illegal. That's doxing. That's, that's doxing different. and that's, that's illegal. Doxing. That's not cancel culture. Mm-hmm. But, okay. It goes to that. But what Francis is saying, it goes to I'm that. Saying I'm saying it's, it's tied to it though. It's all kind of, it's burped from that. People basically saying that even though you, people will escalate it to yeah, a, people right. escalate it to a right. level it's not. We understand that there's an illegal act, but laws don't really stop people from doing what they want to do, right? Yeah, so. I don't know. I mean, I know that that happens as like a one-off, but I don't. I, I don't. Maybe I'm just not. Maybe I'm ignorant of this, but I don't. I don't always hear of people being canceled and then they're they're being doxxed. I know it happens. Yeah, threats and there's also the, people who die letters, as a result of things like that. Like, that. Like, like I think those are kind of like I mean it's, it's it's happened fairly recently. So I mean I, I agree with Francis on that that cancel culture doesn't have a frame, right? It can, it can either swing good or you can swing bad. There's no real control of it. It's however I feel like today. If I feel like going to your house, I got your address, I'm gonna post it online and burn your fucking house down. And it's just like whoa that's that's extreme. To me that's not boycotting that's that's not holding people accountable that's me trying to get revenge because i feel upset and the legitimate avenue that i i have quote unquote is cancel culture and i'm not like i said i'm not knocking cancel culture i just don't agree with it that's not a way i would go about something so i'm not going to knock you about how you feel by all means this is what makes the world a beautiful place i think i forgot who said like it that was you gonna said to make a per, uh, imperfect world perfect but in order to make a perfect world perfect Everyone has to put everything on the table at the same yeah. time because that's the beauty of it to understand. So, like I said, going back to cancel culture, I think it's just my mentality. I think it's just bullying. It's so, yeah, I I agree. Mm-hmm. In some in some cases, that's what it is. In other cases, it's not. And I think that's why I answered yes, I'm for it because mm-hmm. to me, to say I'm not for it means that I don't believe that it should happen. And I think if that goes away, then 
there isn't a platform for people to hold people accountable in, in some examples, right? We all have exam good examples of times where people get together, sign petitions or tweet things. And, and as a result, things change as a result of that, right? Um, yeah. You know, like with teams changing their names and stuff like that, right? People, people in essence canceled the, that, Washington, the Washington football team. <laughs> the Washington football thing, team. Right? I don't know. I, I, I think there are, are there are examples on both sides, I think, of it. So, so that's why I'm see, saying I'm for it. Let's see how real you guys are on this topic. So have <laughs> you ever personally canceled someone? Now, I'm, I think kind of feel like I cancel culture like voodoo, like it only impacts the people that believe in it. And I know some voodoo practitioners are probably going to hit me with that, that dust. But at the same time, it's kind of like, where was cancel culture the, these last four years? You know what I mean? Like, and this is my, my opinion and not to get, don't want to get political because yeah. it's a black podcast. I don't think we're obligated to get political. But at the same time, we have people four years of nonsense <laughs> and nobody canceled this man. You know what I mean? Like, it's not until like now with these trials, that it's like, you mean, nobody could have sprinkled some dust on them, like, ha, ah, you know, out of office. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> none of that. So I'm just like, you know, does it really exist? But at the same time, yeah. I'm not going to front like I didn't cancel some people once I found out they voted for Trump. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I mean, just like that whole MAGA movement as a whole, you know what I mean? I was just kind of like, all right. Well, did no. you cancel or did you just choose not to support them anymore? Right? Mm. Did you really oh, cancel oh, them or did you just say I like, okay, I'm not going to like really listen to this, per what this person has to say anymore. I'm going to block them. I'm going to like, you, you just made a choice, right? Like you didn't cancel the person, right? Like you're not like deleting the person from your life. You just... I mean, they don't exist. <laughs> you cancel, you cancel <laughs> Kanye West? They don't snap them away. <laughs> it's like, yeah, are there four people Why, you, can, you cancel Kanye? Is there a drink? Did you cancel <laughs> Kanye, bro? Did I cancel? Ani, did you cancel the NFL? Once I Colin did. Co Colin I, Kaepernick I, I, got the ball. Oh, you canceled the NFL. I'm not gonna lie. I, I didn't. The NFL, I did not. I did not. I ain't gonna. No, nah, you ain't gonna. Answer, you, you're not gonna ask me to cancel Kanye. You already talked about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm saying. Yeah, I temporarily I canceled Kanye because he was I saying crazy stuff, and I didn't want to support him. I didn't want to listen to his music. I didn't want to support him. See, and that's what I'm saying. Well, and it's as simple as that. It's like yeah, step. and other people did it, right? So a bunch yeah. of people got together and was like, "Yo, this isn't cool," right? So Bro. again, why would I care what other people do, right? This okay. But isn't it possible gotta... to yeah. separate the person from their work at the same time? Like, do I have to? If I, if I cancel this guy, does that mean I can no longer listen to you know college dropout or anything like that? Well, like. For fire me, hour, for me, yeah, hour. for me, it's yes. I know there's some people who can. I know there's some people on this. I won't call anyone <laughs> out, but I know there's some people on this, in the, in this out. podcast who, who can separate the art from the person. I personally can't do it. I try to not force myself to say like, oh, you shouldn't do it either. I, I personally can't do it. I know there's some people who can. Um, okay. But I, I, mean, I, so, I mean, so what you're telling me is a LeBron should just shut up and dribble, right? No, okay. that's not even... Wait, wait. Well, I'm saying, but, but those are LeBron, those are not LeBron, even close LeBron, to the same. Those are LeBron those are close to not the same examples. Well, LeBron is a product. Let's let's right? use it, your example. Let's from use from your. Wait, wait I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear Francis. Francis. I want to hear Francis just put himself in the hole real quick. Let's go ahead. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying because I I mean I can separate LeBron, the person, and LeBron the basketball player, the same way I can do Kanye West the person and Kanye West the rapper yeah. or the producer or whatever. So when LeBron or Kanye, the person says something stupid, I can separate that person from what they do. And that's the same way they produce, they give to the world, right? So that's why okay. I still, I can still support Kanye in his music because of the joy he has brought to me in the past. And currently I don't, you know, versus combining the two and looking at it as a product and just like, Saying okay, I'm canceling both of that part of who they are. How about this? That's that's how I view it. What about R. Kelly? Yeah, I was gonna say let's let's use like I mean, I, I mean LeBron yeah, hasn't really done anything wrong. Like, I mean, fine, R. Kelly too. Like, I mean, <laughs> we can use R. Kelly as a I just example. actually like I mean, um, if if a song comes on on a playlist, I'm not gonna cancel it. Yeah, I mean, I still, but, I'll bang it. I just, actually just played played it like a couple weeks ago. So in the so, privacy of so, your home, but you yeah, know, yeah, you know, know. the street. But I do the different issue. issue. <laughs> it's an it's situation. Like, New I world. mean, I'm not saying I agree with what, what R. Kelly did, but, but that's the thing, right? So, like, in, in essence, you're you're still supporting who that person is by the music or content that cre they create, but they're not a good person. So, like for me, it's just like if you do something derogatory to the greatest extent, i.e., have to go to court for it, i.e., been in blasted, jail. and right, it's just like no, like anything you have made up to that point, like yes, it was a good run before I knew all of this, but I would rather not 
listen to it because this is the meaning behind it. This is the, everything that I didn't get to see. It's just like, how can I sit there and be okay with that? Like, at, right. At all. But I mean, Wait, like I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not short. I'm not looking for searching for stuff. Uh, no, right? I'm, not, I'm not, saying like, but if it comes on or if it like comes up on the skip, playlist, I'm not skip. gonna, I'm not skipping it. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting gonna, skip. I'm, I'm hitting skip. I'm, I'm thumbs that. down in. I'm like, banging never play this shit. again yeah. or anything. Wait, 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 we are wait. jamming, bro. You mean to tell me that you remind me of my Jeep wasn't about his car? <laughs> it, it wasn't. It wasn't. If you, you know I mean, what? This, here's my. Here's I, my. I thing should never. I should didn't listen to. I don't listen to that song. One more. I only have like two, three songs of Car Kid that. Well, the the thing with me is that I. I watched those documentaries. I watched those things. I believe those things that those women said. And when you look at the time periods that he made those songs, like I, I just couldn't, I personally couldn't separate the two. That guy is a terrible person. He's in jail as a result of being a terrible person. I wouldn't want to stream his music or listen to his music or buy a CD or whatever to put any money in his pocket to help him kind of fight his his case to get out of jail yeah, for doing like you know what I mean like that's just that's I, just I, I me. Respect, I mean, and, I, and um, I agree with that. But. And to me, if to me, if there are, if you don't want to listen to his music, especially on like streaming platforms and stuff like that, there are things that you can do to make sure that you don't listen to his music. I but guess I guess if that's something that's me, important to you. I guess you. for me, I'm not going out of my way to cancel someone. That's who's to say that I'm not going out of my way to cancel? I have someone. a question though. Who's to say that he's inherently a bad person? Like one thing, one of the things you learn with the documentaries is that R. Kelly underwent a lot of trauma, you know, growing up as a child, all of this which played a part in him. Not saying that it excuses him, but how, it, how can we say he's inherently a bad person? Are we already canceling the person from that point of view without taking a look at okay, these are some of the issues he underwent, which led to him being the person that he became or doing some of the things that he did. Like isn't there at the sense a more underlying, a deeper issue that we have to look at at the same right, time? Right, and that needed to be addressed, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here yeah. and like play these games. Like the man was was wealthy, right? So he had an issue, he had a crew of people around him that more than likely pointed that issue out to him and he decided to do nothing about it. That's like saying a murderer should be like, hey man, I know you murdered like 30 people and you're a serial killer, but you're a good guy. <laughs> and you didn't go to jail because you're a good guy. I know you murdered like 16 year olds or 20 year olds and even grandmas. You know what? I'm not going to overlook that you had a bad life. So yeah. let's not put you in jail. Let's put yeah. you back out in the street so you can murder other mother people. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. And, nah. and to your point, I don't think it's all that, but, you, but we're basically saying that there's no road to redemption for. Certain. Well, well, there, this there is the is. first time. This is the first there time is. he's actually having to pay for the consequences. He hasn't had to pay for his consequences. So to me, he hasn't even, he just got on the road to redemption. What you mean? But Dre, he not you're not listening to his album no more. He's he's suffering. No, he's in jail for for crimes that he committed against women. So to me, All he's right. now to me he's now he's now starting to do that. I don't I don't I'm not saying that he deserves to be killed or uh, I'm not going to that extreme, right? Because I still mm -hmm. believe that we have laws in place. But to me, he hasn't he hasn't like paid for his consequences, right? No, I think I'm I, so, that, I think that's my good. whole thing with with him. No, that is Whoa. true. I'm not saying throw him away. I'm not saying that he should be killed or, or any other crazy things that I've heard people Whoa. say. No, nah, but he dreams. does. I, I mean, I think it comes with the consequences of life, right? You do crazy, yeah. thing, you get Absolutely. you get what you what comes with it. But I just I don't know. I just think there should be kind of a separation between the art, especially when art artists. I think is always kind of the the, the difficult one. Yeah, like we should be able to kind of separate the artists from. You know, yeah, the, there's there's those uh, problematic faves. I think everyone kind of has their their problematic fave, right? You know, they're they're people who who are uh, maybe R. Jackson. Kelly. Uh, so let's even <laughs> put it in more, uh, I guess, pragmatic terms. So you guys never stop talking to someone just because your friend said, "Hey, I don't mess with this person no more." So it's already implied that you should not mess with this person anymore. So if you mess with them, I ain't messing with you. So none of y'all <laughs> have ever done that or said, "Hey." This dude, you know, he ain't got the right Nikes on. So we're going to ostracize him. We're going to make sure he don't come into this group. You don't sit at this table. So you guys have never witnessed that, been a part of that ever in your life. I, I would nah, have. we've all been a part of that. I'm <laughs> exactly. Like, no, but I mean, if, if no, no, any, no. okay. So, so like, I think, I think that's completely different, right? I think that that way on level, no, that level is right, on a way of maturity, right? So I, I'm not understanding stuff. So. I don't get the concept that what I'm doing is hurting someone else's feelings because I'm not fully developed yet. So like, let's take it back to like, oh, you can't sit at my table because it's a table full of just like athletes, right? I don't, I don't want you sitting here. How I pitch that is a different story. Like, hey, it's just us. You know, I don't want to offend you or like, I just don't want you to sit here. If you sit here, we just want to just gang up on you. And if you can defend yourself, all right, cool. Like maybe this is a cool dude. I, I had a bad impression. 
but like i i don't if someone doesn't like someone else that's your relationship with them right that has nothing to do with me yeah oh i don't like him because he's wearing the wrong nikes well that's your personal problem this dude's been good to me somebody good to them that it's as simple as that They're like oh we don't want you in the store because you're black <laughs> <laughs> like it's and let's just say scene, let's just bro, you let's can't. just say hypothetically there was a six person on this podcast right let's let's use that example right there's a, a mysterious six person on this podcast now if chunky glenn and Francis tell me that this sixth person is a terrible person. And here's here's proof of like why they're a terrible person. I'm probably gonna yeah, I'm probably gonna side with them with more information. So I I would say there's been cases like that for me, yes, where I've heard things from multiple people that maybe I know, and yeah, I'm like yeah. That, I think he, I think Dre just put it. That person. He just straight up said it. We all canceled somebody <laughs> because we felt. We gotta be the homie. <laughs> oh, absolutely. oh, that too. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, that too. The homie. Absolutely. I mean, if, if any of you guys tell me you're not messing with someone, I'm not messing with them either. But but it's here's the thing, right? Because I've been, in, I've been in situations like that, and that person painted a one-sided picture of somebody yeah. else, and it's just like, oh, you you two had beef. It was something over you misunderstood with that person. So yeah. I, I'm not going to ostracize somebody else when I don't know their story, right? I mean, I, I mean that's that's why I mean you I start mean, to dig into the negative side of cancer culture as well because yeah, people just go by airlines and start retweeting and stuff like that without really digging into what really is going on. So before you just what makes cancel culture what it is essentially, like some yeah, people may come exactly. in not even knowing, but out of fear of them being canceled, like you know what, let me just join them because they're the mob at that in that sense. But I think uh -huh. Chunky's about to say something. Nah, I had nothing else to say. I was just I'm trying to get kicked out the party. I was gonna say, Chucky, I, I don't believe you because I'm telling you, there's a, I had a roommate in college who stole all my stuff. Now I'm <laughs> I know that you guys all joke and say that I'm like the father of this podcast, and I'm normally a, a, a even kill person. But to this day, if I see this guy on the street, I'm fighting him just just What's for saying? the simple fact that we were very close, <laughs> right? Like I even gave him money to go home. If if I see him, I'm ready to fight him. And I know that if you're with me and I'm you see this in. guy with me, you're going to ride with me. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So, is that true or not? So, all right, all right. Let's back. You see him looking, him? See him looking up and laughing, right? Because he's trying to find the lie. Exactly. Like so, it depends. Bull is he? Is he six foot eight and 300 pounds? It don't, 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 don't matter your size and your weight. I don't give a that's it <laughs> so what i was going to say there was an example real quick francis i don't want to cut you off go ahead, like, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, I had go that ahead. similar situation at a job i worked at many many years ago right dude i had two dudes i was super cool with the one wow. dude was cool with the other dude he was like just because you mess with him doesn't mean i have to i personally do not like him so if you decide to keep talking to me that's on you but don't bring him around me I was like, cool. I, I maintained both friendships. I, I kept them separate, but he made a valid point. He he made his stance clear. I don't know what happened. Neither did I care to ask. But if he starts swinging on the other dude, I'm not going to follow up because I'm in the middle. It's just like, y'all two going to handle it. That, I'm talking it. about me, though. I'm not talking about your coworker. And, and going, and going back to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, going I'm back asking to you. you. I want you if, to answer. If, if, if you point somebody out and you just give me the nod, you already know that, like, <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> okay, like, then. So, so the other example. Does it, does it mean I'm not whispering to this dude, like, what did you do to him? <laughs> Why is he so mad at you? I'm going to have to. Why do you have to die? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, we all got a, le uh, a level of bias and hypocrite yeah. in us, right? So, like, that's, we are human. So, of yeah. course, we have a, we pick so and this choose. This is no different to me. It's no different to me. It's no different to me. So, I would <laughs> say, I would say, uh, I guess another point we could touch on then. Um, do you guys feel that the public, it's up to the public to hold people accountable when our justice system fails? Because I guess you can see a lot with cancel culture is, Okay, we felt like he didn't get to get the you see the prosecution or persecution he really deserved. So we're gonna take the time now because we know there's power online on social media to you know ostracize or shame this person and make him feel the pain he deserved. We feel he deserves. Do you feel at any point it's up to the public to determine you know how someone should be punished whenever the justice system fails? And I'll say let's go ahead and D Black. You can start that one off. Hmm, I think it's like. When it comes to, I'm trying to make sure, I guess I, I'm not trying to get canceled for saying the wrong thing. I'm not really thinking about it like that. <laughs> but I just think in, in general, we should always, it's important to have a voice in society. I mean, we did talk about freedom of speech in all seriousness. 
Um, and sometimes, you know, we have to kind of get a little loud in order to make things happen, right? I know like with the whole thing with like vandalism of businesses and things like that when it comes to, you know, Black Lives Matter movement and stuff like that because the minorities are not getting heard. We feel like we're not getting heard. So that's why, you know, things get escalated. So in that sense, I don't even know if that if that is in the sense of like cancel culture. I mean, I feel like a whole nother thing, like and a much deeper thing, because I mean, I'm not going to downplay the issues that relate to cancel culture because there are some serious issues out there. I mean, that have hurt that have happened. Obviously, we talked about R. Kelly, you know, we talked about, you know, um, like the Gina Carano situation or whatever. Um, but yeah, I do think that, you know, it, that the, the minority, it does kind of, in a sense, add or give a voice to people who can't speak, you know. And just just real quick on that Gina Carrero thing, I wanted to say to Dre, um, if you think Disney's not going to cancel her, Mickey Mouse, the most powerful one of the businesses in the industry, you don't think she got canceled? She's done. Trust me, she's done. She's never going to work in this industry again. But um Let's put yeah. five dollars on it. Maybe not for Disney. put a house on it. He said put a house put, on it. No, put, put, put five dollars on it. Put a bitcoin on it. Put a bitcoin on it. I'm just saying she's gonna be in another. I just say put a bitcoin on it. Yeah, I just say put five dollars on it. I think she's gonna be in another movie. She's gonna write a book. She's gonna be in TV show. She's not gonna got you. It probably won't be Disney, but basically we're just creating an island of canceled people, and they're just gonna rally for themselves and rally together. My thing, like when it comes down to holding the judicial system accountable, I don't think it's cancel culture. It's just accountability, right? And then we made the judicial system. We are the jurors we are the people who make the laws because we vote on such so oh my bad <clears throat> so we are the people that vote on such right so here's it here's my thing i don't think it's cancel culture if you hold a judicial system accountable like i said we make the laws as society we agree upon those laws as society so that's mean that's not canceling them that's just saying that you made a judgment and error and we don't like it as the people because we are the people that actually pay you. We are the people that actually set the system up and oversee it. Mm -hmm. We just have to acknowledge that we have that level of power and we're finally acknowledging it to push it forward. So to me, that's not canceling. That's to me doing your job as a citizen to make sure things are done correctly for everybody in this society. Okay, so I will ask on that point then, does anyone feel that cancel culture can be considered a form of social justice? And um, as particularly as we see in, there, in cases, for instance, you know, Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, um, those were issues relating to, um, you know, gender and um, mistreatment and sexual harassment, sexual assault. Um, so can cancel, cancel culture in that sense, since it's addressing social justice issues, be considered a form of social justice in a sense? And what's your take on that, let's say? Francis, let's see your take. Yeah, I mean, even though I have my, I said, I'm not for cancer culture, if it is, you know, in that, in that, like, in that format where, you know, um, we actually are, you know, whenever the justice system is lagging and, you know, we can actually use the people's voice to push forward, you know, the, the process a little bit faster or quicker and bring light to those issues. I mean, I'm definitely, I do agree with that. Um, so like, I mean, like, for example, I think the R. Kelly, uh, like example, it's a great, it's a great example of where cancer culture and the ju um, justice system actually kind of went in and in and actually did what it's supposed to do. So mm -hmm. if it's working in that sense, I'm totally for it. But, you know, outside of that, um, I am, I am, then I would say no. But I think if it's within that, that format, I'm definitely, I would say yes uh, to that statement. Mm, that's an interesting take. So last one to wrap it up, basically, we have people that are for cancel culture and then aren't, are opposed to it. What are the alternatives then? Uh, if you aren't meant to cancel people, um, what would you guys say is an alternative to cancel culture as a remedy if you don't believe in cancel culture? Like I said, accountability. That's It's how it goes because you're, holding that person to the standard that they should be at, right? So like I said earlier, I'm not canceling you because you like pickles on your, your burger. You've done something horrendous. You've done something that majority of society does not agree with and there are laws on the books about it. People just didn't know about it yet. So I'm the first person to put it out. Then on top of that, you'll get a trial by a jury. Mm -hmm. I can just have made it up to get you in trouble. It can be a one-off situation that... I, I really don't know, but the simple fact that it's just that, you know, you have your due process, you have your time to stand up and voice what you have to voice. 
So once again, you should get those people being quote unquote canceled the opportunity to pretty much defend themselves. If what they did was completely wrong, then yeah, there's there's justice behind it. But I don't I don't think cancel culture is the way to go because it doesn't have true teeth and true legitimacy behind it. Not to say that if you support it, I'm against you. I just don't agree with it. You can do what you want, but that's just not my method of taking care of a situation. But sometimes the legal system doesn't work, which we already know. Um, and, and I address that too. Yeah, and I agree with that. But I'm just saying. So, um, sometimes we need other we need other tools to escalate. Yeah. And to necessarily... me, that's how that's how some things have changed because people enough people spoke about it, and as a result they had to put laws in place to change those things to so, overwrite yeah. the things. So, so to me, I think it's an important, um, but, I think, I think it's something as long as no, let's, let's just put it in the box of as long as no laws are being broken. I think that cancel culture, um, has a place in society. Um, <clears throat> because I think it forces people to be aware and, and hopefully change for the better is, mm -hmm. is my, is, is my way of thinking of it. All right, folks, you heard our take on it. What is yours? Um, definitely check us out at JJC Podcast and on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And stay tuned for the outro to learn how you can check out us, check us out more and learn how to get in contact with us as well. And until then, stay tuned for the next episode. Peace. 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 Bye. Bye. And that concludes today's episode, but that doesn't mean the conversation has to end. As a matter of fact, check us out on Instagram or Twitter at JJC Podcast for our post discussion question. If you're a black business owner and like to be featured on the show, shoot us an email at jjcpod at gmail.com. Additional details in the description field below. As always, likes, comments, and shares are humbly appreciated. Subscribe to be notified when our next episode releases. But until then, stay blessed. Peace.